I hope you would agree with me that we can't let uncertainty dampen our confidence. You need to view each question as a stepping stone toward greater understanding and with each attempt you are improving your abilities and inching closer to your goals. You are presented with three groups of squares. Each square has a number inside. The first group has numbers 7, 3 and 31. The second group has numbers 5, 4 and 29. And then the third group has numbers 8, 2 and then comes the missing number which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 21. Choice B, 23. Choice C, 26. And last but not least, choice D, 31. Do you think it's a challenging question? It uh, very well might be, but keep in mind that the solution might be simpler than you think. And instead of feeling how hard it is, I would like you to focus on thinking out of the box. Rest assured, you're not trying to solve this alone. Regardless of your experience in problem solving, I believe in your abilities. Pause for a moment, harness your creativity, and let's face this challenge together. The answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready to showcase your solution? Let's get into it and see how our answers match up. And even if you don't have the answer, don't get discouraged. Keep your spirits up, even if you're unsure. With every question, whether answered correctly or not, it's a chance to gain valuable insights and refine your skills for future success. Hopefully, I didn't disappoint you saying that the answer might be simpler than you think. In fact, the pattern here is that the lower number is calculated as a result of multiplication plus the sum of additions of the upper numbers. Let's look at the example. The first group of squares has number 7 and 3 in the top. 7 multiplied by 3 plus 7 plus 3 in parentheses equals 31. Let's look at the second group. 5 multiplied by 4 plus 5 plus 4 equals 29. Now we can calculate the missing number. 8 multiplied by 2 plus 8 plus 2 equals 26. So the correct answer here is choice C, 26. <laughs> it's hard to deny, but with this question, we have to embrace the uncertainty of not knowing the answer. But keep in mind, though, that doing your best in trying to solve this question is also a chance for you to showcase your resilience and problem-solving skills. You are presented with four squares. Each square has four numbers inside. The first square has numbers 17, 15, 34, and 11. The second square has numbers 12, 18, 28, and 19. The third square has numbers 21, 10, 30, and 16. And then comes the fourth square, which has numbers 27, 17, 25, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 23. Choice C, 26. And last but not least, choice D, 31. Do you think it's a tough challenge? Well, the solution might be simpler than you think. Let me show you the pattern. Look, all numbers here are two-digit numbers. And then choice A is only one digit, so probably we can eliminate it. Wouldn't you agree? And then you have a 33.3% .3 of solving this question by just selecting one of the answers, B through D. Obviously, it was a joke. This question may or may not have the pattern that's easy to understand. But instead of thinking how hard it is to solve this question, I would like you to start thinking out of the box. Rest assured, you're not trying to solve this question alone. Regardless of your expertise in problem solving, I believe in your abilities. Pause for a moment, harness your creativity, and let's face this challenge together. The answer is just waiting for you to be discovered. Are you ready to showcase your solution? Let's get into it and see how our answers match up. And even if you don't have the answer, don't get discouraged. Keep your spirits up even if you're unsure. Every question, whether answered correctly or not, is a chance for you to gain valuable insights and refine your skills for future success. The pattern in this question is rather simple. Sum of all the numbers inside of each square equals 77. Let's look at the example. In the first square, if we add up 17, 15, 11, and 34, the end result of this is 77. 
Let's confirm it with the second square. 12 plus 18 plus 19 plus 28 also equals 77. Believe it or not, but in third square, 21 plus 10 plus 16 plus 30 also equals 77. Now we can calculate the missing number. We need to do calculations a little differently here. 27 plus 17 plus 25 equals 69. 77 minus 69 equals 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, 8. You can't argue that you need to approach this problem like a detective solving a mystery. Each correct answer is a clue, and you're on your way for cracking this case of your brilliance. You're presented with three diamonds. Each diamond has numbers and letter inside. If we look across all three diamonds, at 9 o'clock we have numbers 1, 2, and 3. If we look at 12 o'clock, we have numbers 2, 3, and 4. At 3 o'clock, we have numbers 3, 4, and 5. And at 6 o'clock, there are letters X, E, and then comes the missing letter. I assume it's letter. What do you think? What's interesting here is that if you also look across each diamond, you see the pattern clockwise. In the first diamond, the pattern is 1, 2, 3, and then comes the letter X. In the second diamond, there might be a pattern 2, 3, and 4, and then comes the letter E. And then in the third diamond, the numbers are 3, 4, and 5, and then comes missing something. Well, I'll correct myself. I think missing something is a letter, because we have four possible choices for the answer. Choice A, letter B. Choice B, letter C. Choice C, letter D. And then last but not least, choice D, letter E. Well, I totally agree with you that this is a tricky question. Remember though, you are not navigating this path alone, and I am here to help, as well as other subscribers on this channel. Take a moment to gather your thoughts, tap into your imaginative side, and let's triumph over this challenge together. Your solution almost ready, and is definitely within reach. Are you ready to unveil your solution? I am eager to see it, so let's proceed and compare the answers. I think the pattern here is that the bottom letter is the last letter in the sum of all the digits. Let's look at the example. In the first diamond, we have numbers 1, 2, and 3. The sum of 1, 2, and 3 is 6, which is verbally spelled as S-I-X, and the last letter of the word 6 is X. This is how X was calculated. Let's look at the second diamond. In the second diamond, the digits are 2, 3, and 4, and the letter is E. 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 9, and in the word 9, the last letter is E. Now let's calculate the missing letter. In the third diamond, the digits are 3, 4, and 5. 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12, and the last letter in the word 12 is E. So the correct answer here is choice D. Admit it or not, but it might be a great idea to think of these assessment test questions as puzzle pieces in the grand masterpiece of your skills. The more you solve, the clearer and more vibrant your picture of success becomes. Just as every cloud has a silver lining, every challenging question carries a lesson waiting to be discovered. You're presented with matchstick challenge. There is an expression, you need to move one matchstick to fix the equation. Current equation is 1 plus 2 equals 7, which is not mathematically correct. It is hard to believe, but moving only one matchstick will help you solve this equation. Are you feeling challenged by this question? I totally understand. Remember though, you are not navigating this path alone. I am here to help, as well as other subscribers on this channel. Whether you are a problem solver, expert, or a newcomer, I have faith in your capabilities. Take a moment to gather your thoughts tap into your imaginative skills, and let's triumph over the challenge together. Your solution almost ready, and is definitely within reach. Are you ready? I hope you are, so let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. To solve this challenge, let's first understand the rules on how to deal with these expressions. In matchstick challenges, less and greater signs are not allowed. You also cannot use not equal sign. For example, you cannot move one matchstick from the plus sign to create an expression 1 minus 2 not equal to 7. 
So now we know what is not allowed, let's look at the tips how you can actually solve this challenge. Let's look at the two most important things. Number one is that moving one matchstick changes two elements of the equation, source where you took the matchstick from and the destination. To solve it effectively, you need to envision the potential rearrangement of matchsticks and how they might alter the equation. There are three important rules there. Consider movement of matchsticks from the signs to digits and from the digits to signs. Consider negative numbers. And last but not least, consider which digits can be transformed. Speaking about transformations, let's look at some samples to help you better understand it. For example, you can build 7 from 1 by moving one matchstick from another item. Another example might be building 9 from 5 and 5 from 9 by moving one matchstick from another item. Do you know any other digits transformations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. Knowing rules and consideration, it becomes very easy to solve this equation. We just need to move one matchstick from 7 and make 1 a negative number. The correct expression here is minus 1 plus 2 equals 1. You would have to admit that trying to answer this question is like convincing a cookie to share its chocolate chips. It's a tough cookie, but the reward is sweet. Maybe this tough question is stepping stone toward mastery and understanding, which is rather a sweet reward. We are presented with the challenge where we need to build singular plural business word pairs. One pair is present, manager and managers. For the other words, you need to build the pairs. And the other words are company, index, crisis, and analysis. Do you feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, those are tough words and you're not alone in this journey. I feel exactly the same way. But whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are. So let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. To better understand the plural versions of the words, let's start with the words definition. Company is a legal entity formed by individuals or shareholders to engage in business activities. And plural version for companies is spelled as C-O-M-P-A-N-I-E-S and is pronounced as companies. Index is a statistical measure that represents the relative change in a group of values or prices. The plural version for indexes is spelled as I-N-D-I-C-E-S and is pronounced as indices. A crisis refers to a critical, unpredictable event or situation that poses a threat to organizations' operations, reputation, or overall well-being. The plural version for crisis is spelled as C-R-I-S-E-S -E and is pronounced as crises. And then the last word analysis involves the examination and evaluation of information, data or elements to gain insights, draw conclusions and make informed decisions. The plural version for analysis is spelled as A-N-A-L-Y-S-E-S -E and is pronounced as analysis. You would have to agree that when you're conquering this question, you're wavering a tapestry of triumph. Your knowledge and skills are the threads that create a beautiful picture of achievement. You're presented with three expressions. The third expression missing the result. The first expression is 23 multiplied by 32 equals 32. Second expression is 25 multiplied by 52 equals 50. And then the third expression is 27 multiplied by 72 equals and then comes the missing number which you need to select out of four possible choices choice a 73 choice b 74 choice c 75 and last but not least choice d 76 do you think it's a tricky question fear not you're in a good company on this quest whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out i have confidence in your abilities pause for a moment channel your inner creativity and let's conquer this challenge side by side your solution is just around the corner are you prepared with your solution 
I am curious to compare the notes. Let's move forward and share our answers. As you might have guessed, we are not dealing with traditional math expressions here. You need to think out of the box to solve it. Instead of using traditional math, you need to use different rules. The first number doesn't change, but you need to replace the multiplication sign with the plus sign. And in the second number, take the first digit into the power of the second digit. Let's look at the example. The first expression is 23 multiplied by 32. To calculate it correctly, you need to take 23 plus 3 in the power of 2, which would be equal 23 plus 9, and the result would be 32. Let's look at the second expression. 25 plus 5 in the power of 2 equals 25 plus 25 and equals 50. Let's do the math for the missing number. 27 plus 7 in power of 2 equals 27 plus 49 and equals 76. So the correct answer here is choice D, 76. One has to acknowledge that you need to think of this question as a puzzle pieces in the grand masterpiece of your skills. The more of these questions you solve on your own, the clearer and more vibrant the picture of success becomes. You're presented with a series of shapes. Each square has smiley faces inside. There are five squares and the middle square is missing. You need to select the answer for the missing square out of four possible choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. You might be thinking, and I totally agree with you, that this is a tricky question. And it is. But I want you to remember, you are not navigating this path alone. I'm here to help as well as other subscribers on this channel. Whether you're a problem-solving expert or a newcomer, I have faith in your capabilities. Take a moment to gather your thoughts, tap into your imaginative side, and let's triumph over this challenge together. Your solution almost ready and is definitely within reach. Are you ready with your solution? I am eager to see it, so let's proceed and compare the answers. As you might have noticed, there are two patterns here. The first pattern is easiest to detect. The number of smiley faces is increasing with each shape. So shape 3 should have 5 objects inside. And the reason is because shape 1 has 3, shape 2 has 4, then 5, 6, and 7 in shape 5. Well, it helps us a little bit because it eliminates choice B but we still have choices A, C, and D we need to sort through to make sure we can find the right answer. Well, we do it by finding the second pattern. And the second pattern is that shapes fill the corners first, and then starting at 12 o'clock, they fill up the missing spaces. Let's look at the example. As you can see, in shape 3, the missing smiley face would be at 7 o'clock. Then in shape 4, the new shape shows up at 12 o'clock. Then the next one in shape 5 would be at 3 o'clock. And then if we want to continue the pattern, the following shape, if there would be a shape 6, the smiley face would be at 6 o'clock. Which means that the new smiley face will show up at 7 o'clock in shape 3. And which also means that the correct answer here is choice C. It's uh, hard to deny, but understanding this particular question is like decoding a secret message. Once you crack it, you feel like a secret agent of knowledge. In fact, patience and mental skills that you're building by practicing this question is the key that unlocks the door to success in the assessment journey as well as in life. You're presented with nine numbers and need to determine all prime numbers in this series. The numbers are 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. And your answer should be selected out of four possible choices. Choice A, 31 and 39. Choice B, 35 and 37. Choice C, 31 and 37. And last but not least, choice D, 35 and 39. Feel like you're stuck on a challenging problem? Well, you're not alone in facing this hurdle. I feel exactly the same way. But whether you're problem-solving pro or a novice, I trust your skills. Take a brief pause, unleash your creative thinking, and let's confront this obstacle as a team. Your answer is eagerly awaiting your discovery. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are, so let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. 
Let's first understand what the prime numbers are. Prime numbers are natural numbers greater than 1 that can only be evenly divided by 1 in themselves, having no other positive divisors. The sample prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and then you continue going up. What's interesting is that the prime numbers are fundamental in number theory and play a crucial role in various mathematical and cryptographic applications. To solve this challenge, we need to go through each number and check if it's divisible by any smaller numbers. Let's start with number 31 and see if it's divisible by any smaller numbers like 2, 3, 4 and so on. Once you do it, you realize that it's not divisible. We can even try a square root of 31 and only to learn that it's not divisible, which means that it is a prime number. 32 can be divided by 2 and the end result of this is 16, so 32 is not a prime number. Same with 33, it can be divided by 3, 34 can be divided by 2, 35 can be divided by 5, 36 can be divided by 2, 37 is a prime number. You can go through the same chain of exploration as we did for number 31. 38 is not a prime number and 39 is not a prime number. So the correct answer here is choice C, 31 and 37. It's uh, hard to argue, but figuring out this question is like making a sandwich. There are a lot of layers, and sometimes all you need to do is just take a bite to understand it. But I feel what's easy to understand is that tackling this particular assessment test question sharpens your mind and fuels your love for challenges. You're presented with four expressions, and you need to sort the results of these expressions in descending order. The first expression is one-fifth plus three-fourth, Second expression is square root of 1 minus 1 tenth. Third expression is 1.2 minus 1 quarter. And the fourth expression is 0 0.9 multiplied by 1.1. Take a close look at these expressions, do the math, and then select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A represents descending order as 1, 2, 3, and 4. Choice B represents as 4, 3, 2, 1. Choice C 2, 3, 4, 1. And last but not least, choice D, 4, 3, 1, 2. Feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, it's easy to understand that. But you're not alone in this journey. Whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. Your answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your solution? I hope you are, so let's move forward and compare our versions for the answer. The easiest way to solve this challenge is to complete the calculations and convert the results into the decimal system. In the first expression, to add these fractions, you need a common denominator, which is 20. So 1 fifth becomes 4 20th and 3 fourth becomes 15 20th. 4 20th plus 15 20th equals 19 20th and equals 0 0.95. In the second expression, square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 tenth equals 9 tenth and equals 0 0.9. A third expression can be calculated as 1.2 minus 0 0.25 and the end result of this would be 0 0.95. The result of multiplication in the fourth expression equals 0 0.99. Now it's time to do the sorting. Our highest value is 0 0.99, which is the fourth expression. Then we have two expressions with the same value. The result of expression 3, 0 0.95, equals the result of the expression 1, which is 19 20th. And our smallest value on the list is the result of the expression 2, which is 0 0.9. What's especially interesting here is that even though results of expressions 3 and 1 are the same, the correct answer choice is only 1, which is choice D. 4312. <laughs> Some might argue that attempting this problem is like playing hide and seek with a ghost. It may seem elusive, but with a little persistence, you will uncover the mystery. But I see this question like a garden of opportunities. It may be a seed that, when nurtured, grows into knowledge. Your goal is to determine the opposite business word pairs. You already presented with one pair innovative versus conventional, and you need to find the opposite business word pairs for other words, which are transparent, collaborative, 
strategic and stable. Feel like you stumbled upon a tough one? Well, it's not that difficult to solve, and I have full trust in your problem-solving capabilities. Whether you're a problem-solving veteran or a newcomer, I believe in your capabilities. Take a moment to reflect, tap into your creativity, and let's tackle this challenge together. The answer is just waiting to be discovered. Are you ready with your version of the solution? I hope you are, so let's move forward and compare our versions of the answer. I think the opposite of transparent is the word opaque. Opaque in business describes the lack of transparency or clarity, where the information or processes are unclear, making it difficult for stakeholders to understand or access. The example of the sentence with the word might be, the financial report was so opaque that investors struggled to understand the company's true financial health. The opposite of the word collaborative is independent. Independent in business denotes autonomy and self-reliance, indicating the ability for the entity or individual to operate without unique influence or reliance on external factors. The example of the sentence with this word might be, the entrepreneur decided to start an independent consulting firm, free from constraints of a traditional corporate structure. The opposite of the word strategic in business is tactical. Tactical in business sense relates to actions or strategies that are carefully planned and executed to achieve short-term goals or respond to immediate challenges within an overall strategic framework. The example of the sentence was this word might be, the marketing team implemented a tactical campaign to boost sales during the holiday season, targeting specific demographics with precision. An opposite of the word stable could be volatile. Volatility in business refers to the degree of unpredictability and variability in market conditions, prices, or other factors. The example of the sentence with this word might be, the stock market became highly volatile with prices fluctuating dramatically in response to global economic uncertainties. Did you come up with any different alternatives? If you did, please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. Here's the question where you might struggle to get to the correct answer, but I have full confidence that you'll be able to solve this challenge. You're presented with the sequence of numbers. The numbers are 1, 3, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to determine the missing number and rationalize your solution by selecting one of four possible choices. Choice A, 17. Choice B, 29. Choice C, 57. And last but not least, choice D, 123. I would recommend you run this question through the most common patterns you have in your mind, so you can get to the correct answer. Are you ready to compare solutions? Awesome! Let me transition into revealing the answer to this question. I'll share with you my take, and if you came up with the different or perhaps more efficient approach, feel free to drop it in comments below. If you are a subscriber or perhaps a frequent visitor to this channel, you know that the key to solving this challenge is to determine the pattern. And the pattern here is that next number is calculated as a square value of the previous number plus 2. Let's look at the example. The first number is 1. 1 square plus 2 equals 3. Then comes the next number, which is calculated as 3 square plus 2, which equals 11. So the final, the missing number calculation would be 11 square, which equals 121 plus 2, which would be equal 123. So the correct answer here is choice D, 123. Here's the very interesting question, which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions. And in force expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 17 height. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In force expression 7 plus 3, you need to find the result which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? 
let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions, subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I gave you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. Second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final fourth expression, which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. Prepare to tackle this intriguing assessment test question designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to foster your analytical skills, which you can use in the day-to-day -day life. You need to determine the missing number, which is located on the top of the pyramid. The other numbers in the pyramid are 8 and 28 in the second row, 4, 4, and 7 in the third row, and 3, 1, 4, and 3 in the fourth row. You need to calculate the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 26, choice B, 30, choice C, 32, and last but not least, choice D, 36. Let me give you a hint. Consider that I might be trying to mislead you by the way I present the information. Maybe there is another alternative look and how you can look at this data. Are you ready? I think I found my answer and I am thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine our strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember how I presented the information to you? I started from the top and went to the bottom. But in fact, you need to start from the low-level numbers and apply math operations to the low-line numbers to calculate the higher-level numbers. To confuse you even more, there are two math operations are alternating in the calculations, addition and multiplication. Let's look at the example so you get better understanding. Let's look at the numbers in the bottom left corner. 3 plus 1 equals 4. But 1 multiplied by 4 equals 4. Remember I told you that addition and multiplication are alternating. So the next one would be addition again. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Let's go to the row 2. 4 plus 4 equals 8. But 4 multiplied by 7 equals 28. So to calculate the top number, we need to add 8 and 28 to get to the final result of this, 36. So the correct answer here is choose D, 36. Here's the tricky question, but not for you, as I have full confidence that you will be able to solve it. You need to rearrange the words to form a coherent sentence, and then determine the last word of this sentence. The words are bush, brown, the jumps, over, fox, quick, the. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you have your answer ready? Because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let me share with you a secret. I'm going to share with you how you can solve this challenge in three simple steps. The steps are identify the subject and verb, build the sentence, and then verify the last word. Let's go step by step to solve this challenge so you will see an example. The first step here is to identify the subject and verb. You need to look closely at the subject, who and what in the sentence is all about, and verbs, actions or states of being. 
In this particular case, fox jumps is the subject verb combination that suggests a potential starting point for the sentence. Second step is to build the sentence. You do it by placing the subject and verb in the appropriate order and then arranging the remaining words to create a logical and grammatically correct sentence. The sentence here is the quick brown fox jumps over the bush. Then in step three, you verify the last word. Pay attention to the last word of the sentence. In our case, the word bush is the last word of coherent sentence. And this is the choice A. Let's recap. The complete sentence is the quick brown fox jumps over the bush. And the last word in the sentence is choice A, bush. Did you get to the same solution? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Well, you might be surprised, but this test question is more complex than convincing your cat that the red dot is not the actual enemy. Can you outsmart the laser pointer of perplexity? You are presented with cool looking shapes. These shapes have numbers on the outside and letter inside. The numbers in the first shape are 1, 2 and 3. And the letter inside is X. In the second shape, the numbers are 4, 5 and 6 and the letter is N. In the third shape, the numbers are 7, 8 and 9 and there is a missing letter which you need to determine and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, Q. Choice B, R. Choice C, S. And last but not least, choice D, T. Are you ready to dig deeper? Give yourself enough time to uncover the next layer of brilliance. I have full confidence that you've got the answer. But just in case, make sure you grab your thinking cap on this expedition. We're about to explore the twists and turns of your next brain teaser. As you might have guessed, the trick here is to determine the pattern. And the pattern here is extremely simple. The letter inside the shape is the last letter of the word which represents the sum of all the numbers. Let's look at the example. In the first shape, the numbers are 1, 2 plus 3. The sum of 1, 2 and 3 is 6. This is why the letter inside is X. In the second shape, the numbers are 4, 5 and 6. 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 15. And the letter on the inside is N. Now it's easy to calculate the missing letter. 7 plus 8 plus 9 equals 24. The last letter of words 24 is R. So the correct answer here is choice B, R. Let's dive into the world of letters with this amazingly tricky question that not only evaluates your English alphabet knowledge, but also tests your analytical skills and your strategies for tackling challenges effectively. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. The matrix has letters inside. The first row has letters A, B and D. The second row has letters B, D and F. And then the third row has letters D, F, and then comes the missing letter, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, H. Choice B, D. Choice C, F. And last but not least, choice D, K. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I mentioned that this question is a little tricky, so let me give you a hint. Take a close look and consider why would some boxes, some squares in the matrix would be in gray? and some would be in white. Was it helpful? I hope it was. I've unlocked my answer and I'm excited to unveil some hints for you to share the answer. Let's explore the solution together. And obviously, if you've came up with the different and more creative alternative solution or tips how to solve these types of challenges effectively, make sure to post them in comments. To answer this question correctly, let's look at our matrix from a little different dimension. Each letter here corresponds to a specific place in the alphabet, which can be represented by the number. For example, letter A equals 1, letter B 2, C 3, and etc. If we follow this logic, we can replace all letters in all three rows with the numbers. So for the first row, the numbers will be 1, 2, and 4. For the second row, the numbers would be 2, 4, and 6. And for the third row, the numbers will be 4 and 6, and then would be the missing number. The next step is to determine what's happening with the numbers. 
and how to calculate the missing number. Remember I gave you a hint? Hope you figured it out, because numbers in the white squares here are the result of addition of numbers in the gray squares. Let's look at the example. For example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is how the numbers in the white squares of the second row are calculated. 2 plus 4 equals 6. This is the result of the calculation in the third row, which would mean that the missing number on the intersection of 4 and 4 will be calculated as addition of 4 plus 4, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, H, because H is the letter that corresponds to the number 8. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.